back again today with another video. And today's video is the uh, card shop experience video. I uh, went to three different card shops that I frequent um, over the past year. And I would like to go and check up on, see what sort of vintage cards that they have available. Um, so we're going to go through the experience so you can see uh, what the shops are like, uh, what they have, what sort of deals that they, that they showcase. And um, at the very end of this video, I'll show you uh, what cards I picked up today. Uh, the theme today was to keep it under $100. So on a $100 budget, we can see what sort of vintage cards can be purchased. Um, so before we get started, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy vintage uh, sports cards and a little bit of junk wax, uh, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right corner of your screen and hit the notification bell to be kept in the loop for all future videos. Um, so at the very end, I will talk about some tips and tricks and things you can do when you're trying to budget for uh, vintage cards and uh, you want to be able to kind of approach it in a very, not so much a strategic way, but just uh, you know, financially responsible and just uh, you know, to keep, uh, keep a lookout for certain things. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well, just to kind of give some advice for other people who want to um, know how the best approach to buying vintage sports cards. Uh, so with that said, why don't we jump right into it, and we'll see you soon. Wait, anyway, Mike, what were we saying? Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this one, because, Mike, I was at so many games we had playing. I know. But he said if what it was is this kid was a, a quarterback at a freshman quarterback at some school in Boston working in the hospital. He had been with Parcells for a, and I, when he was wheeling him in, he sort of grinned with Kay. And I forget what Dick said to the kid, but he signed him. And I maybe Parcells said, What are you gonna sell him or something? And he said, no, no, and I'm going to be right here when you come out, and he was. And yeah. here's another one he said, which was really funny. He said, because Kay said to him, were you afraid? He'll tell you this, on the way, they're rolling me out, and I'm on my back, and you know the lights on the ceiling. So I saw lights, 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 and I thought to myself, that might be the last thing I ever see. So when I got to a certain point, I tried to get, I was an optimist, but I, I, yeah, I was, he didn't say he was scared, but, but the thing with the kid was, he wasn't a kid, he was a 17-year-old yeah. kid. That's a good story. Michael K is so good on those interviews, no matter who he has, I love that. Whenever I catch one, I'll watch it. Yeah, yeah, Michael K is good. Okay, Tommy Sue. Some guys just, yeah, whatever. Um, basketball cards, the old stuff. Yeah, the case looks pretty cool with some of the stars in here. They're like the rookie guys. Neat. Yeah, and I'm, nice yeah, I'm seeing a lot of these. These are like the 72, 71, 72. 71, and 71, 72, 72, 73, yeah. Yeah, very cool. You picked those up from like collections of people? That's too bad. Yeah. Wow. Why did the Dolphins get rid of Brian Flores? Because he was, uh... He like he did pretty good. I, I think... I don't know for sure, but Rossman was telling me he, he thinks it's uh, um, Tua. Begin the year, he I don't like Tua. No, because he kept trying to trying to get Tua to do more by saying they're gonna bring in Watson. Uh, you know how the first part of the year they sucked, they lost seven in a row. Yeah, That's because yeah. he kept saying we're we're you're going against, you know, yeah. you don't start doing some better. We're gonna bring in Watson. He didn't like that. Do anything with 68, right? Any 68s? Yeah, 68 
Uh, not really. I haven't. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, Hey Tom, I got a customer for you. What are you doing back there anyway? Hiding. <laughs> Go hiding. I'm nervous with all those people in before. <laughs> What's Look, up, kid? How you doing? How's it yeah. going? Pretty good. How's your holiday? What are you doing now? Very good, thank you. Uh, traffic coming from New York? Oh, there's no traffic at all. I was gonna say. I mean, I always leave early because yeah. try to get the try to get the rest of the day as well. Oh yeah. As long as you don't get off at the federal road exit, you're alright. Yeah, no, I um. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is always seeing the jacket things in your store. Really? I know. Yeah. See. A lot of times. Chris and Mike. Mike. But there's a lot of them in the world. So. Makes sense. Plenty more of those. Ryan's too. Cool. Visit NJN.com. Visit NJN.com. Visit NJN.com. Visit NJN.com. Visit NJN.com. folks so we're back i hope you all enjoyed the the experience uh the total of three shops as you experienced dugout dreams village baseball cards as well as remember when sports cards the three great shops in the proximity of each other one in uh, village baseball cards in carmel hamlet new york dugout dreams which i think is just outside of danbury connecticut and then remember when baseball cards which i think is in brookfield connecticut all within 20 30 minute drive of one another and as i mentioned i was keeping um the budget to be under a hundred dollars and came away with some really great stuff here so we're gonna go through each uh each card all the cards here let me just quickly make sure that my piles have been separated so i can show each store so that they are 
So the first store that I went to was the Village Baseball Cards. Uh, Mike is the owner. Very, very nice guy. Um, makes great deals and um, has a counter that shows uh, all types of sports cards, uh, mostly vintage, some modern. And you can get deal. He has a 50% discount deal on them. So I came away with two cards from his shop for a total of $15. And the first card that I purchased was this uh, 59 NL Hitting Kings, Richie Ashburn and Willie Mays. Uh, you could see the price tag was $20, but it, in fact it was $10 because of the 50% discount. And the card itself is in very good shape. I don't, I mean, it's mis, uh, miscut here. Obviously, you could see that there's major centering uh, issues. Looks like they're just like the trimming is off. But to find a Willie Mays card from the 59 set, an insert, as well as Ashburn, who are both, they're both Hall of Famers, to find it in this price for $10, I could not walk away from it. And I knew I'd kind of feel regretful not getting it. Um, so I figured the price was right for $10. I went ahead and I uh, purchased this card. Uh, the second card I purchased was also in that 50% case. And that is the 1966 Harmon Kilbrew card. Uh, this one I ultimately ended up getting for uh, almost, I think it was six, almost over 60% discount because um, everything came out to be $15. So uh, this one he gave to me for five instead of 750. So I got it for $5, and the condition is pretty impeccable. Um, no severe uh, issues in the corners. Um, the centering's off, but that's besides the point because the card itself is in very good shape. And I didn't, I haven't really collected a lot of 1966 cards. The ones that I do have, I have like a Willie Mays, a Sandy Koufax, and I'm sure, I'm sure I have some others. But I figured for the price, this was a good pickup. So that was Village Baseball cards. You can go check out the shop. Uh, Mike, um, if you're a YouTube creator, content creator, he says that he is very, he loves the, um, the uh, when people film and uh, record inside the store because it just gives them free publicity and uh, he really just, he, he enjoys it and he loves talking sports. So um, you can go in there, let him know the Sammy Fender sent you. So um, you got those two cards from that store. The next stop was uh, Dugout Dreams, and Dugout Dreams has an array of stuff, mostly modern, but there is some, there's a little vintage pile. And what I love about this shop is that he has a bargain bin, as y'all have seen from the video, where he sell, he has two different bins. He has one that are exclusively $1, and then another bin, which are like a wide variety of prices, anywhere between a dollar and like, could be $50, $60, depending on the card. But he has kind of like a nice stack here, so I've been on a real basketball kick lately, and so I wanted to pick up some um, some Celtics as well as some vintage uh, Hall of Famers. And I think I picked out some really good cards here. I mean, this Havlicek All-Star, we'll start with him. The Havlicek All-Star card for $3. This one's from 1970, uh, I think this is from 73, this series. Um, and it's a beautiful card. Uh, no, no, I mean, there's a little bit of a tiny crease on the corner here, but otherwise, this is a very nice card. Hondo, for a long time, led the Celtics in uh, in scoring. Um, I believe that has been taken, I think uh, Paul Pierce is the new scoring leader, if I'm not mistaken, for the Celtics. But for a while, it was John Havlicek, and he was one of the, like, just one of the star uh, offensive players the Celtics have ever had. Um, obviously, there's Larry Bird and Bill Russell, but, you know, Havlicek was a, was a force to be reckoned with. And it was really cool to find this card for $3. The next card was the second year card of Jojo White, and uh, y'all probably have seen recently that I did the box break for the uh, top 70, 71, and I picked up a Jojo White rookie card, which I was really psyched about. So this is the second year, it's $10, there's no, I don't see, uh, when I was looking at it, I didn't see any issues with this card whatsoever, and I thought the price was really fair for this, and it's a beautiful looking card, and um, again, you know, trying to pick up as many Celtics as I can. All right, so the next one is the 73 Gaylord Perry. I know I don't have this card in my collection. Um, when I when I uh, made one of my big collection purchases, I do not see a 73 Gaylord Perry, and this was $1. This is in the dollar bin, and uh, it's in very good shape. Very good shape for this. And he won, looks like, yeah, Gaylord Perry won the AL Cy Young in 72, so 
this is uh, this card is coming off the year where he won the Cy Young. So this is a nice one with the Cleveland Indians. I know I didn't have this one. Next one, we got Rick Barry, Hall of Famer. This one is from, I'm still learning about the basketball years. This one's also from the 1971-72. So this is a 73 card. For $5, is Rick Barry is in, is in excellent condition. Pretty decent centering. Um, obviously, he was a force to be reckoned with as well. Uh, played with the ABA and uh, was with, I guess, the New York, oh, he was with the Warriors here. This is his first year with the Warriors. And um, he was with, I guess, with the New York Nets prior. And look at those, look at those numbers. 31.5, 29.4, 27.7, 34. I mean, these are uh, I mean, amazing numbers. And he, I guess early on in his career, he was with the San Francisco, uh, oh God, I'm going to mess it up. The Royals, or are they, the, I can't remember what their team name was. But nevertheless, Rick's father-in-law was his coach of Miami. That's pretty cool. So this is very nice. Next one. Now, I'm a Celtics fan, but i got to show my appreciation for La for Lakers Hall of Famers, and Gail Goodrich is one of the many. Uh, for 6 bucks, this was a beautiful-looking uh, 1972. Great-looking card. They kind of like, you know, the... Uh, they got these um, cool-looking font choices for the team names. Um, kind of went out on a limb here. Kind of the like tops definitely went in an interesting direction during those '70s years, uh, like the baseball, the '72 and the '75. And I think they're kind of getting trying to be a little experimental with these as well. So definitely very cool, Gal Goodrich card. Let's see what they say on the back. Uh, name only player to return. To former club after his loss in NBA expansion draft. Oh, that's a trivia question, and I guess it's Gail Goodrich. <laughs> um, great player. Good stats. Um, first year with the Lakers was 70-71. Played with the Phoenix Suns, and then was with, yeah, I guess with the Lakers prior to that as well. And his numbers only went up from there. So good numbers. Uh, he fit in well with Jerry West. So kind of like the, yeah, good one-two uh, one punch in the backcourts. So this one I found for five dollars. This was an Elvin Hayes from the same year. Uh, there was one that was for fifteen dollars, but I like this one better. Uh, I mean, there's it's trimmed on the top, so that's why it was a little bit cheaper. But very nice card. You can kind of see in the back here. It's pretty trimmed. But um, center. He was the center for the Houston. Like yeah, he went to the uh, Houston Rockets here. I guess he was with the San Diego Clippers for a long time. And look at those numbers: twenty-eight four, twenty-seven five, twenty-eight seven. Just really overall, some really great numbers. Ranked uh, in the top three among the NBA scoring and rebound leaders in 1970 and 71. So he was probably up there, if I imagine, he's probably up there with like Lou Alcindor or I guess Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at that point, and Will Chamberlain. So he was probably up there with them. And he was 6'9 and a half, so he really, you know, going up, against, going up against Jabbar and also going up against Chamberlain must have been quite a challenge. But Elvin Hayes was quite a player with a lot of just... Obviously a Hall of Famer. Here's our new Hall of Famer. We picked up one of his, picked up his rookie card the other day. And now we have his, uh, I guess this is his third year card. Bob Dandridge, the Greyhound. Uh, just inducted, I think, this past year. And uh, his numbers, you know, I mean, being uh, kind of like, I guess, the number three between him, Oscar uh, Robertson, and uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Great players. From Richmond, Virginia. He was a six foot six forward, and he was scoring, you know, at nothing, 18, 18 points a game. Very respectable numbers, uh, especially when you have players like Oscar Robertson and Kareem Abdul Jabbar, who uh, Kareem is an offensive force to be reckoned with, the number one scoring leader in all of basketball. And so those are the basketball cards from the store, and I picked up some really cool baseball cards as well. I thought these were really cool. Uh, I generally don't collect a lot of the early 50s yet, but I saw these for a dollar and I thought, you know, why not? We have a 1957, uh, yeah, Lindy McDaniel, and this one looks to be in really good shape for a dollar. Um, I don't know if this is part of the card. I couldn't tell, but I figured for a dollar it's worth, you know, just taking, taking home. There's no creases, good centering, and you can see on the back, I mean, this was, I guess, right, this was put in at $25. Either that or this had another card that was worth $25. But a beautiful card. Um, let's see. The year he went 7-0 with St. Louis um, with a 3.41 ERA. 
decent player, Lindy McDaniel. I mean, he wasn't, I don't think he, I don't think he made, no, not a Hall of Famer, but a very good player, a uh, very good pitcher. And the next one was, I think it's his rookie card. You can tell me if I'm wrong here. Uh, Ozzy Virgil, the New York Giants. Uh, I think Ozzy Virgil, if I'm not mistaken, is the first Dominican player to ever play baseball in the uh, in the major leagues. And um, it shows his stats when he was with the New York Giants in 1956. Um, so I don't know if this does count as his rookie card or if it's a second year card, but it's still for a dollar. I saw it and I thought, you know, I love collecting New York Giants players and I don't really have any cards from, you know, this set. And I think they're just really classic looking. Um, and this one was in really good shape. And for a dollar, I figured, you know, there's no reason why, you know, no reason not to get it. And let's see. Oh, we have one more. We have a 1969 Don Sutton. I saw this for a dollar, and um, it was in pretty good shape. The corners are a little, mang like you know, very just, you know, just your uh, just your average um, condition issues. Nothing really substantial about this Don Sutton, as far as it being too um, uh, poorly in shape. Um, but for a dollar, Don Sutton is a Hall of Famer, and this is his fourth year card. I figured, why not? For a dollar? Absolutely, Don Sutton. So that was altogether, I think these cards came out to about 35 altogether when you count all of them up. And so then here we got 15. So we spent $50 between both um, Village Baseball cards here and Dugout Dreams here. So $50 spent there. And now we move on to the Remember When baseball cards in uh, Brookfield. And I bought some cool basketball cards here. This Don Nelson was pretty ba pretty banged up, um, and Tom, who is uh, the owner of the store, we I purchased from him a number of times. Very nice guy. Um, he knew that this Don Nelson was banged up, and he knows I buy a lot of stuff from him, and he was really cool enough to let me take this home for free. That was really really nice of him to do that. So I wanted to make sure I bought some cards. So I bought this Havlicek. Um, I love collecting Celtics. He had it at fifteen. Um, obviously, Havlicek's career is. Unbelievable, as we talked about just before with his all-star card. And his numbers don't lie. He has like 27, 28, 24 points per game. Um, and it shows here a little, little interesting fact. He was also drafted by the Cleveland Browns. So he could have been a football player. So we have, yep, the uh, Havlicek. We have the Don Nelson rookie card. I mean, it's technically not Don Nelson's rookie year, but this was the... Um, this was the year where they started uh, making official cards uh, again in 1969, 1970 set. So this is classified as Don Nelson's rookie card. It's as I mentioned, it's banged up. But and here's another rookie, Hall of Famer Dave Bing from the Detroit. I want to say the Pistons. They were the Pistons at that time, and this is also considered his rookie card because again they have they weren't printing any official cards prior to that. I think the prior one to that was 1961 Fleer. Uh, but then it, uh, I don't know the history of it, but it jumped between 61 to all the way to the 69, 70. Um, so I, I, I might look that up after. But this one was, you know, had it for 20. The Havlicek was rated at 15. I wanted to be fair with Tom. Tom is always fair with me. He gave me the Don Nelson. So I asked for, I, I asked him if I could get these for $30 and he was more than willing to do that. Uh, we had a nice chat after, and um, he was trying to show me other cards. And so, we're, you know, I always check out his shop a lot. So, um, so all together, you know, uh, I guess that was, yeah, 30 so $80 spent between all these cards today. So before I finish up, um, I mentioned that I was going to just talk about some things that you can do when you go card shopping. The one thing I always do is I always try to see if there are any sort of bargain bins. If you're not, you know, if you're if you're not too concerned about condition or about the players, bargain bins are great. And like places like Dugout Dreams had bargain bins where you can go through and find vintage sports cards um, from a variety of years. So for you know, prime example. The bargain bins that, you know, like the Don Sutton card I found in there, this one was a dollar. And 
Don Sutton is no stranger. I mean, Don Sutton is a Hall of Famer, and this is one of his earliest cards. So you can find stuff like that for a dollar and be able to pick it up and, you know, take it home with you. And then, you know, like Ozzy Virgil, this is a classic old card from the 50s, and to find this for a dollar is pretty uncommon. You would have to probably pay, you don't know, maybe five, six dollars in, uh, at a card show or... Um, I mean, you might be able to find these at a tax sale, but even that is rare because a lot of people don't get rid of these. So to find these in bargain bins, I highly recommend checking stores out like that. Ask them if they have any sort of vintage bins that you can sort through or you can go through and find cards that you really like. And then you go and you get like your basketball cards, like $2. I think this is a fair price for a nice Elvin Hayes. So you kind of like... In this case, Dugout Dreams had, a, as I mentioned, had a second bargain bin where you can kind of go through and find stuff that is that you want in your collection. There's no right or wrong. It's just what you want. And if the price is there, you go for it. But I highly recommend asking about those when you go to card shops. That's one thing I would do. Um, obviously, this is more of a com this is more of an obvious thing, like a common sense thing. But when you go to a shop for the first time, it might be difficult to be able to ask for discounts because you are a stranger to the shop owner. So obviously, repeated visits will help in your in your case. Um, so, like for example, when I went to remember when uh, when I went to remember when uh, sports cards. I already had a prior relationship with Tom. I purchased from him before. I've sold things to him before. So I didn't feel uncomfortable asking for a discount on these two cards. Now, I'm not going to lowball him because, listen, he's a veteran collector and a veteran dealer. He knows exactly what he, he's been doing this for many, many years. But, you know, you want to make reasonable offers that are not too low, but also not, you know, not too high where you can't, uh, where you don't feel good walking away. So, you know, he had this at 20 had this at 15 I asked him for $5 off. I figured that was fair. And so he was more than fair with me. But that's the thing is that um, the number, the second thing I'd recommend is after the, after this, you know, the first, second, or third visit, um, establish relationships with the dealers. That um, Talk shop with them. Talk about different cards. Talk about what you're building. Talk and just ask questions. You want to ask questions to these dealers at these shops so you can build a rapport and be able to establish a working relationship with them because that will help you um, get the cards you want at the right price. Um, but again, I can't stress this enough. I would not go into a shop and try to lowball anybody because it's not good for business. It's not good for them, and it won't be good for you in the long run. So that's the second thing I recommend. And uh, the last thing is when I went to the Village Sports Cards, you want to look for those cases that say, hey, we have a 25%, 50% discount on these cards. And, um, you know, again, it's similar to Dugout Dreams. Mike from Village, uh, base, uh, Village Baseball Cards had a 50% discount on these cards here. And so you can find amazing cards like the Willie Mays insert card for, you know, for... Uh, in this case, $10, and be able to take it home with you and add it to your collection for a very, very reasonable price. And similar to Dugout Dreams, you want to establish a relationship with the uh, with the owner and um, be able to build a relationship and, rep and a rapport with them. So those are the things. That's the, those are the things I recommend. One again is to ask about the bargain bins, ask about those dollar boxes because you really never know what you're going to find. I found the Gaylord Perry I was looking for, and I only had to pay a dollar for this, where this card in this condition would probably cost me five on online, maybe a little less. And uh, the second thing is to make reasonable offers after building a rapport with the uh, with the owner. So again, like Dave Bing and John Havlicek, I got these for 30, but that was only after having an established relationship with the owner. So you want to become a, uh, a familiar face. And then the third is to look is to just kind of keep your eyes out. Look out for those 50% cases because they exist. Card shops have them. You can make great deals. $15 for these two, I think, was a great deal. So definitely be on the lookout for those things. I highly recommend checking out these shops. I will leave the information in the descriptions below. 
and you can um, reach out to them and find uh, hopefully find some uh, really cool uh, diamonds in the rough. And um, but ultimately, uh, let me know which card, which what cards you like the most from today's purchase. And again, if you're not uh, if you're new to this channel and you enjoy what you've seen, please hit the subscribe button below and uh, hit the notification bell to be kept up the loop uh, kept in the loop for all future videos. I appreciate y'all. And I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your weekend.